Hello chess friends and welcome to your side of chess channel and welcome to a new chess strategy and tactics video. So in this series basically I'm searching for some great games that have a certain strategic value but then also cool tactical elements in the middle game or uh, in the end game stage and I think I found an amazing game that has both of these elements. Today we'll follow a beautiful gameplay by Anatoly Karpov again John Nunn back from 1982 and what you say about Anatoly Karpov he is really one of the greatest chess players of all times and I would really recommend you if you're a beginner please download many great games played by uh, Anatoly Karpov because his games have always this common ideas in the middle game stage, the common patterns that bother us in the middle game stage like the backward pawn, isolated pawn, pawn breakthrough motifs, uh, positional trades of pieces for instance which is also very important for beginners when to trade off maybe a bishop for a knight, when to go into a knight's endgame, when to go into a bishop's endgame so um, Anatoly Karpov's games I think have a great value so that's why I would recommend it as I said to uh, simply analyze in the beginning his uh, his positional masterpieces what to say about john nunn don't underestimate john nunn john nunn was three times the world champion in problem solving in chess which is really crazy when you think about it harder problem solving a very tough quest uh, in the chess world for sure uh, because many many great positional setups we have seen uh, many great uh, puzzles we have seen and basically it's very very hard to recognize them. it's very hard to uh, to understand them it's very hard to solve them and uh, being a three time world champion in this kind of stuff is really crazy this shows that uh john nunn has a great great intuition that he has a great creativity in chess so also respectful grandmaster for sure so let's see now what happened in their first positional game but then afterwards tactical game uh here with the white pieces anatoly karpov opened with the move e4 john runs response was c5 to sicilian after knight you have three e6 we have the french sicilian now it becomes the open sicilian and after move knight you have six knight to c3 uh, knight to c6 we have the four knights variation now anatoly karpov immediately attacks now uh, here the weak score on d6 here John Nunn supported with the move d6 and now after move bishop to f4 e5 bishop to g5 the game transposed now basically into the so-called uh, Lasker Sicilian Pelican uh, Sveshnikov Sicilian where white is putting more pressure against this knight on f6 and provoked some structural weaknesses we have now two main weaknesses in black's camp we have now the backward pawn on d6 and the uh, also the weak score on d5 these two uh, elements, uh, Anatoly Karpov will attack in the continuation of the game. These two elements, John Nunn has to now defend in this position. And here John Nunn plays the move a6. Now we have knight to a3. In now. Um, here John Nunn goes into the so-called bird variation of the pelican Sicilian with the move bishop to e6. I myself would not recommend you to go into this particular line. It is a tempting idea to improve the main weaknesses that we have talked about you have a backward uh, pawn on d6 you have also a weak score on d5 but it's not an easy quest here to do uh, this kind of idea because the knight is still pinned and white has already great control with the pawn with the queen with the knight uh, here around the score d5 so the whole concept to maybe push the pawn on d5 is not working a better way to go and it's the main line of the sveshnikov sicilian is to play b5 to even force maybe the move b4 now white is already on the reacting side and white has to now improve basically the main weaknesses uh, that black has in the position white is simply playing the move knight to d5 and now there is simply not so much pressure anymore around the square d6 so uh it's i think a more playable line for black so if you're sveshnikov it's in i would recommend you this particular line but okay here bishop to e6 played by john nunn anatoly karpov uses now this moment and he's saying you had your chance to uh, deactivate my knight on e3. My knight on a3 was really a bad piece. Now the knight becomes, I think, a good piece. And there is now a clear path for the knight. Knight to e3 or maybe if possible, knight to b6. In the later stage, we'll see that it's possible. Knight to b6 and then hit simply again further the square d5. And when you are playing against the backward pawn and also against the weak square like d5, you should simply... Uh, sorry... 
sorry about that uh we're not going to answer that so here when we play against this backward pawn and also against this weak square in d5 we're trying to get rid of any piece that is protecting the d5 square and it's of course first of all the knight and also the bishop on e6 so these two uh pieces we're trying to eliminate and then to hop with the knight on d5 and simply fix the structure uh here around this important square so here rook to c8 was played by um john nunn Karpov plays immediately bishop to f6. The knight on f6 was the key defender of the square d5. Very, very good positional trade of pieces. Now, after move queen to f6, now my question here for you is, we are eventually occupying the d5 square, but should we do here knight to e3 or knight to b6 and then uh, here knight to d5? So what, would you, what should we do here? Should we maybe... Uh, play knight to e3, knight to d5 maneuvers, or knight to b6, and then knight from c to d5. What would be your uh, idea here? What would you do now in this particular position? I'll give you a couple of seconds, so think about this position harder. Okay, here the best way is obviously to go with knight to b6, because there's simply no control play here by black against the pawn, uh, against the square d5. You can play, of course, rook to b8, to getting out of the attack, but now look at this knight to d5 and we have reached now the same position but only with a huge difference that we have occupied already the d5 square but also we have now a very active knight on b6 if we would have played uh something like knight to e3 okay after queen to d8 still you'll have your fun around the square d5 but it's not the same story it's not the best line because you don't have such a great activity like in the previous line. Now, after knight to b6, you see with knight to d5, both knights are very powerful. They're more active in the game. So we have queen to d8 by John Nunn. We have c3, bishop to e7, bishop to c4. As promised, as I said in the beginning, also when we have a clear target, when then we're just playing on this target, backward pawn on d6 and weak square on d5. Still, these are the main issues here in black's position. King said callousing, callousing, bishop to g5, getting the bishop somewhere active in the game, but this bishop is not optimal. This bishop is only targeting this diagonal where basically no piece is, so there is simply no further progress by the dark square bishop. So a4, here uh, Karpov continues the pressure, king to h8, queen to e2, we have a g6, and now king to h1. Bishop to h6 simply trying to get some kind of a new activity maybe with bishop to g7, f5, f4 and similar stuff. So now we have b4. Here John Nunn plays now the move f5. Again my question here for you is how are we going to solve here the pawn storm that's coming out to us because we have to say it. White has a little bit problems here on the king side because black is coming with the move f4 g4 g uh, g5 g4 maybe bishop to uh, g7 then maybe we even with h5 if possible so black is slowly but surely storming here uh, uh with this attack so my question here for you is how would you solve now the position problems here on the king side so pause the video and try to see now the best continuation here for white Okay, now there is a beautiful idea with e takes f5, which Anatoly Karpov, of course, played. If you play here, bishop to f5, then you don't have the position that you wanted to get. You wanted, of course, to have connected pawns that are rolling here. So with the bishop pair, uh, black is playing uh, dynamically. Black is trying always to create a dynamic position. Now, after move g takes f5, Anatoly Karpov stopped simply the further progress of blacks and played now the important move f4. Realized, of course, if something like e takes f4 or bishop to f4 happens, uh, then the bishop is hanging uh, here on the e-file, so it's not working. So you could maybe try this one, bishop to c4, queen to c4, but look at this, this is not an optimal position. We can also play, of course, knight to c4 uh, after something like this. This is a weakness, this is a weakness, so it's a messed up game uh, here for black for sure. So f4 solved now immediately all of the positional problems in uh in um white's camp here after move bishop to d5 we have bishop, uh, knight to d5 here uh, e4 was played by john Nunn, so he's trying somehow to still connect his pawns but he provoked now many many weaknesses in front of his own king he has now the supported pass pawn but it's not really uh this powerful supported pass one because this 
small pawn chain f5 e4 can always be broken with a potential move g4 by white so we have a5 bishop to uh, g7 rook from a to c1 knight to a7 rook from uh, f to d1 uh, simply putting more pressure here on the d file we have knight takes d5 bishop to d5 queen to c7 and now rook to c2 queen to e7 queen to e3 here karpov has of course the weakness on c3 but this weakness can always be improved with a potential c4 move so first of all what karpov is doing he's creating the blocking the blocking against this supported passport and this is the way to go you have to stop the potential further progress of the e-pawn if this pawn starts to roll with the support of the rook maybe on the e-file this could be also very dangerous then you have problems maybe the bishop will come into the game so so far the blockade is working here for for what so rook to c8 c4 fixing everything here on the queen side rook to c7 and now g3 fixing also the structure uh, here on the king side so g4 will eventually come but later when you have maybe regrouped when you have first of all secured your position now we want to play maybe rook to e2 or rook to e1 stopping again the further progress of the pawn on e file and then when the time is right then we push the pawn on g4 and we'll split the pawn chain here on the king side so rook to e8 rook to g2 queen to uh, f6 john nine is playing here really active chess he's trying now to get the queen somewhere here and also hit the pawn on b4 we have g4 now it was the time to break and enter here because white is a great activity we have f takes g4 rook to g4 and now comes this idea queen to c3 by john nun attacking now the one uh, pawn on b4 but here karpov shows his great position but also his great a tactical understanding of the position because okay you will maybe get the pawn on b4 but then the queen is far away from the action the queen gets a little bit disconnected from the whole game uh now karpov simply left the position like this played now rook to g3 after queen takes b4 now karpov activated both of the strokes on the uh, g file and now from this point on i think the game becomes simply a one-way ticket in uh in white's favor you cannot of course even play here with the queen around because for instance f5 is going to happen rook to uh rook to h3 we can even in some lines maybe sack the rook here on g7 so in my opinion uh, this is not suddenly a good position anymore here for black so queen to b2 john nine is realizing that he could have problems so he's trying to get the queen back into the defense we have rook to g5 but probably f5 was the better way here for uh, karpov to go because after something like queen to f6 you could maybe play something like bishop to e6 fixing everything here uh in the center of the board and now you will have i think a free run you would have i think free activity with your pieces and this pawn is weak probably if bishop to e6 would have, would have happened then probably i think jonan would immediately sacrifice the rook for uh, for the bishop and then maybe grab even the pawn on e6 in my opinion this would be a must must tactical sequence than for black but it's risky of course to give up the exchange in such a position so after move rook to g5 was played so not this f5 move f5 move is really the suggested move by top engines we have queen to f6 jonan drops back and now now, rook to g4 now we have a check king to g2 queen to b2 and now king to h3 look at this really really wild stuff anatoly karpov uh, gets this king cornered but no good checks are possible the rook are, the rooks are paralyzed here the rooks are blocked out basically white rooks are only playing in here anatoly karpov has a clear target it's of course the h7 square so we have now uh, rook to e7 uh here even if you play something like queen to c3 to to trade up the queen this is not good because look at this queen to c3 happens bishop to c3 and now you get even checkmated here on g8 really really wild stuff so this uh, trades of pieces is not working i think black would love now to trade off the pieces in order to simplify the game but it's not working so rook to e7 we have f5 now finally by uh, karpov queen to f6 we have now rook to h5 rook to f8 rook to h4 look at this uh slowly but surely karpov is building this amazing attack look where the rooks are and look where the king is so really really wild stuff how nothing can be actually attacked in white's position so white is playing really freely because of this amazing activity of the pieces so we have h6 we have rook to g4 rook to e5 and from this point on i want you also now to participate actively uh, in in this position now we are searching for the principle of maximum activity so now my question always here for you is 
how should we stay active in this particular game so no retreating moves now anymore for you here when you have this beautiful active position now it's time to be a tactical beast now it's time to be a tactical monster now you have to play simply the best most active move so my question for you is the first question here what is now our next move what is now uh, the move with the most activity here for white so pause the video and maybe try to be active now try to see now the best next move okay here Karpov played here rook from g to g5 simply supporting the pawn on f5 but also keeping now the pressure here in the game. So after rook to c8, again, the new question here for you is again, let's apply the principle of the maximum activity. Again, we're just improving our pieces further. We are not immediately creating tactics. We're just keeping the pressure. So it's like a build up. We're building a house. Uh, you cannot build a house just by uh, putting a roof immediately. You have to, of course, have the solid grounds uh, in order to build the roof. So and that's why we have to build our house further. But in order to build a house, we have to be now again, again, more and more active. So try to see now again, the most active move here for white. Okay, here Karpov played the brilliant king to g4. He activates even the uh, the king now into the game. This is really possible because the king cannot be in danger. Really well stuff. After here, uh, king to h7. Again, my question here for you. So what is now our next move of the best activity? Again, try to see now the best next active move. Okay, here rook to g6. You see how uh, Karpov is keeping the attacking flow. He's not allowing here black to breathe. After queen to f8, again, my question here for you is again, let's see the principle of the maximum activity. Let's find the best next active move here for white. Okay, here comes another stunner, queen to g5. So you see, everything is so well coordinated in uh, in Anatoly Karpov's attack. So he's pushing here really uh, John Nunn to his limits. And now uh, under huge pressure here, uh, John Nunn cracked with queen to f5. And now uh, here my question for you is, of course, after queen to f5, rook to f5, what is now the winning move here for white? So white moves and wins the game after that move. Uh, here John Nunn was simply lost so again try to see now the tactical solution of this amazing chess game okay here's the issue if you play rook to f5 uh, this is not good because then you lose the rook here on g6 the same thing happens if you play king to f5 then you get disconnected from the defense of the rook so it's not working first you have to play of course rook takes g7 after king to g7 now rook to f5 and in this position John Nunn actually resigns so really really wild stuff I think this is really an amazing chess game maybe not this I don't know, Mikhail Tal, uh, Bobby Fischer, devastating chess game. But this is how chess is played. First great strategies, improvements of minor pieces, improvements of the position, healthy king uh, uh, positions where we're trying to get our king where it cannot be endangered by our opponent. Maximum activity, you see, very, very important element also in Anatoly Karpov's games. Maximum activity to the limits. He pushed his king to g4. He pushed the queen to g5. He activated pieces in the most brutal way. And then uh, you saw John Nunn cracked under huge pressure. In my opinion, really, really beautiful chess game played by the legendary Anatoly Karpov. So, okay. I hope that you enjoyed this game. Interesting ideas also in the Lasker Pelicans at Cillian. If you want to see more amazing chess strategies like this, check out our Basics in Chess series and also our Become a Master in Chess series. Here are the links of two of my most important uh, playlists on my YouTube chess channel. And if you like this content, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you soon with some more videos. And what do we say? Chess is the best, of course.